It says on this wise, and we've got it up on the screen if you don't have your Bible with you today. Thank God for all of you that are here once again. It says, Jesus continued. He says, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had. Look at this. Set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. I wonder what that was. After he had spent everything, <laughs> the young son, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. Look at this. All that he had suddenly began to vanish. Verse 15 says, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. It says, I went out <laughs> and go back. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy. Anybody feel like that? Sometimes you feel like that. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Y'all know this story. But while, Lord Jesus, he was still a long way off, uh, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. My God, look at this father that he has. He ran to his son. Lord Jesus, he didn't wait on it for him. He ran to him. He ran to him. He ran to him. He ran to him. How many of you know that God is running after? He's chasing after you. Come on, somebody. It says he ran to his son, threw his arms around him. He didn't neglect him. He didn't say, where were you all this time? He didn't say, son, I'm disappointed in you. He put his arms around him. And the Bible says he kissed him. Verse 21 says, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. For some ladies in here, you're saying, I'm no longer worthy to be called your daughter. But the father ignored his son, turned to the servants and said, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. I want y'all to know right here that he saved the best for last. Y'all not hearing me in here. I understand you've been going through some things in your life, but Father God has saved the best robe for last. And he says, bring the best robe and put it on him. He says, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to celebrate today. We're going to celebrate today. For this son of mine, Put your hand on yourself. This son of mine, in some cases, this daughter of mine was dead. Something's happening in this room. Something's happening in this room. Was dead. Was dead. And is alive again. He was lost. Come on. I was lost. Somebody in here. You were lost. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, you were lost. Come on, tell them with some conviction. Tell them you were lost. You were lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Father, Father, use me for your glory. Speak through me as only you know how. Let this not be Kyle, but let this be God. The Father, let your spirit fall. As I decrease, may you increase. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn to your neighbor before you take your seat and tell them, I'm a prodigal son. I'm a prodigal son. Turn to somebody else and tell them, I am a prodigal son. 
Look at someone else and tell them I'm jacked up. Tell them I'm all beat up. I, I, I don't got it together. Come on, you got to talk to your neighbor. You're going to be sitting next to him for the next 30 minutes. Just tell them, excuse me, hi, how are you? I, I need help. I need some serious help. I, not only is my breath a little warm and hot, not, not, only, not only do I look a little crusty today, but I d certainly need a little bit help in the spiritual area. If you're sitting next to someone that don't want to talk to you, I guarantee you, you need to find a different seat and find someone else to talk to because this is a very interactive service. Come on, tell someone, I'm a prodigal son. Prodigal son. To be prodigal, brothers and sisters, means to exhibit reckless, extravagant behavior. It is a person who spends money without frugality. It is a reckless abandonment from modest living. To be prodigal literally means spending money and resources freely and recklessly. It means to present oneself as a spendthrift or as an imprudent person. When many of you think of the meaning of prodigal, we immediately begin to envision gold chains, bling bling, ice and diamonds, chrome wheels that spin, outrageously expensive cars, Gucci belts, and a fancy bottle of cologne that no one really knows how to pronounce. I can tell some of you in here are probably thinking of individuals such as a James Brown or a Floyd Mayweather or a Kim Kardashian or a Kylie Jenner. Many of you perhaps feel perhaps unrelated to this term, this phraseology that I'm using, prodigy, simply because you've never had the type of money that causes one to become prodigal. However, my friends, I'd like to articulate to you that being prodigal is not only based upon action, but it is also based upon attitude. It may not be that you spend money recklessly, but you are also reckless in several areas such as time, meaningful relationships, you're a prodigal at that, hidden potential, important task, perhaps reckless with food choices, uh, perhaps reckless with your social surroundings and even personal devotion to God. Please understand that irrespective of having tons and tons of money, the word prodigal will always resonate with all of us because we are all guilty of recklessly abusing the Father's love. You must realize, brothers and sisters, what you lack in money, you will always make up in the Father's love. Money is never as present as God's love. It's, it's just never as, as permanent as God's love. Money is temporal, but God's love, how many of you know this, is eternal. But the problem with this is because God's love is so consistent and readily available at our leisure, we tend to abuse it the most. Because what is always present and readily available to us, we never tend to honor it or value it to the regard by which it should be valued. You see, the things that are always available to us, we like to abuse those things. We like to mistreat those things. But how many of you realize that God's love, whether we abuse it or not, is always consistent? Somebody ought to give God praise for that. The good news that I have to tell you is that you will never out do God's love. Your sin will never outlast God's love. Your iniquity, your transgressions, whatever it is that you have ever done in your life will never scare your God, your Father away. I am here to let you know, brothers and sisters, that pound for pound, God's love beats your sin even on your worst day. Somebody give God praise. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 4 that God is rich in mercy and with great love, God God loves us and because he loves us so much he will never allow the areas by which you have fallen he will never allow your proclivities or your flaws to ever damper his level of love for you and because God loves us he will never be afraid to love you in spite of you not loving him back come on he loves us even when we don't love ourselves he loves us even when we don't know what love is father God is always consistent with his love Turn to your neighbor say he's always consistent he's he's never failing with his love and and I need you to understand that father's God love my friends my brothers and sisters is an incomprehensible love how many of you know that that means that his love just doesn't make any sense it, it, it is absolutely irrevocably insane that he loves me in spite of who I am it absolutely makes no sense that God would love me 
the way that he does in spite of who I am. I wish I had a church in here. It's profound, his love, but yet it's foolish at the same time. It's necessary, brother, but it's yet reckless at the same time that God would murder his only begotten son just for my putrid, nasty, filthy sins. He, 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 he pleased himself to, to bruise his son called Jesus, who was the ultimate lamb of God, but was yet at the same time uh, pure. He was untouched. He was untainted Jesus Christ. I'm talking about him. But yet, God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he what? That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would what? Would not perish. Come on, somebody. How many of you know God loves you enough to see you live and thrive and not perish? Come on. He, you will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. And the question, uh, Samantha, still stands for my life. Why would God go through all that trouble to slay his son Jesus just for little old me? Come on, I wish somebody in here. Me, the sinner, the, the degenerate, the liar, the thief, the loser, the gangster, the thug, the fatherless, the motherless, the unchurched, the unlearned, the unschooled, the adulterer, the backslider, the criminal, the racist, the hater, the divorce. Come on, somebody. The high school dropout, the college dropout, the anxious, the drunk, the fearful, the addict, the shameful, me, the sinner, the wretch undone, the, 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 the recluse, the, the drinker, the smoker, come on, ah, the one that doesn't get it right the first time or the second time or the time after that, the one who has fallen time after time after time. Why is it that he loves me? Come on, church. Why is it that he loves me so much? And the question stands in the Bible, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Him, brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know that God's love may never make any sense, but thank God he had enough sense to love me and know that I needed his love. Come on. So Psalms 51 says, God will not despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart. And the good news is not only does God delight in loving those that feel love the least, but he also enjoys loving those who don't deserve it the most. Oh my God. He loves me in spite of who I am. In spite of what I've done, his love is never ending. It's never failing. It is consistent and it is long lasting. Come on. His heart beats louder than your problems beat on your life. He has such a big heart that the scripture says he's slow to anger. He might be mad at you, but he will never have wrath on you because his, his, his anger is very slow. He's quicker to love than he is to judge. I don't know who it is that you're hanging around lately. I don't know who it is that is condemning you lately, but I'm here to let you know in spite of how people treat you, Jesus Christ loves you more than they do. Come on. He, he loves you with an unfailing love, and he loves you enough to go after you and seize you and grab you and love on you in spite of your running. Oh, come on. How many of you know that he will pursue you, not to judge you, nor to condemn you, but he will pursue you because he loves you that much that he won't let you fail. Come on. He won't let you die. I wish I had somebody in here. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor real quick that he won't give up on me. He loves me enough that he won't give up on me. He, he knows that I'm messed up. He, he knows the way that I take. But the Bible says that when he has tried me, I will come forth as pure gold. I wish you would turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor I'm coming forth as pure gold. I know that I'm not altogether lovely yet. I know I don't have everything thing together but if you just allow this process to take its time on my life and allow love to lift me when I was deep in sin love lifted me when nothing else could help love I wish I had somebody in there it, it, it lifted me it lifted me uh, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly and thank God he loved me past all my faults mom and he saw my needs thank God that he didn't look at me and see all of these issues in my life and say I just can't deal with it any longer and in spite of people walking out of your life and leaving you abandoned he won't leave you nor will he forsake you I'm here to minister to the prodigal sons that feel as though father God has left you high and dry I'm here to let you 
know that he has not left you. In spite of how you might feel about yourself and when you look yourself in the mirror and you don't like what you see, I'm here to let you know that Father God continually whispers in your ear that your mind, son, your mind, daughter, your mind, child, and no matter what the devil would like to convince you to believe or persuade you to believe, Christ has an unfailing love for you. I need somebody to put your arms around yourself because there's a big hug that's being administered in this room right now because somebody has been on the brink of perhaps committing suicide. There's somebody in this, I've never seen suicide, by the way, can I just side note right there? I've never seen suicide take over America so much in my life. Do you know that lately suicidal rage has spiked more than ever in U.S. history? That man and women and celebrities and idols are killing themselves. They're murdering themselves. Police officers at the 5th Precinct have just killed themselves. There are individuals that just don't see value in life anymore but I'm here to let you know that the love of God overtakes that suicidal mind that suicidal mind that wants to take your own life there is no distress that Father God can't handle there is no stress that Father God can't handle there is no emotional turmoil that Father God cannot diagnose he is your healer because his love, his love, somebody say his love, his love endures forever. But I'm here to let you know that in spite of all of this about the Father's love, you cannot accept the Father's love until you receive the Father's love. My God, somebody hear this in here. I'm going to say it again. You cannot accept the Father's love until you receive the Father's love. Hebrews 3.15 says, the day you hear my voice harden not your heart. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Would any man would hear my voice and let me in? I will come and I will dine and I will commune with him. That's Revelation 3 and 20. Love, my friends, is an inheritance that you receive from the Father. Your biological father may not have left you an inheritance because he had none, but I'm here to let you know what your biological father might have lacked. Your spiritual heavenly father will pick up the tab. Come on, somebody in here. Your heavenly Father has left you a great, tremendous, overabundant inheritance that shall be signed over to you. There's no way in the world that you can miss what God has for you because he's going to make sure that it's delivered to you. And how many of you know that when God sends a blessing, he sends a blessing with my name on it so that it cannot be confused, so that it cannot be taken by someone else. Father God has specifically assigned a a blessing, a miracle with your name on it. What good father do you know would allow his children to be confused as to what he has given? Every need has been supplied by Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider. He is such a good father that he knows every child in here individually. No matter how often you come around with others, no matter how, how, how similar you might look to others, how identical in the face you might be to others, Father God has numbered every every hair on that head. He knows the sound of your voice. He knows, come on, the murmur of your heart. He knows the way that I take. He knows my steps. He has ordered every last one of them. How many of you know? And he calls you before the foundations of the world and he formed you and fashioned you individually and for that reason the Bible says in him we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But every last one of us he has put a DNA. He he has put his hand on us. He has put his love on us. He has put his hands on us. He has put his arms around us. And every last one of us, he calls us child. Somebody give God glory in this room. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, this is the Father's love. The Father's love has literally made it available that you were purchased. Ah, my God, with blood money. The money that you were purchased with, child of God, was drenched in blood. I wish I had some believers in here. Uh, you've got to know that that blood uh, that is on this money is the precious uh, blood-bought blood of Jesus Christ. 
The blood of Jesus has purchased your ransom. Jesus Christ paid a huge sinful debt that wasn't even his, my God. An extremely hefty fine, Brother Darius, that would have never been able for me to be able to afford. But Jesus Christ, look, he gave the advantage. He picked up the tab. Come on, when you couldn't pay your own bill of sin and debt, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins because your sins couldn't get you out of your sins. So he sent a perfect, pure, spotless lamb of God to be the ultimate sacrifice to take the place that you should have taken and what good father do you know would ever allow his child to go through turmoil and not take the place of the child come on good fathers take things out of sons and daughters hands that seem heavy too heavy for their spine too heavy for their hips too heavy to bear the burden good father says take my yoke upon you and learn of me from my yoke is easy my God and my burden is like good fathers take these things from their children when it seems destructive I'm here to let you know that father God has taken your burdens and you don't need to bear them any longer father God has taken your heavy loads so you don't have to bear them any longer he said cast your cares upon me because good fathers care much I wish I had some sons and daughters in here that know how much God loves you. The love of God. Turn to your neighbor and say the love of God. 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 He picked up the tab. He, he paid off my bill. He, he paid for my ticket. He, he took care of it for me. He said, son, I wish I had some daughters and sons in here. He turned to me, Samantha, and said, don't worry about it. I got this for you. And sometimes I just like that word. Just a few words. Not much. A few simple words. It's called, I got you. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say he got me he got me it, 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 I, I know I don't look like I've got it all together yet but I want you to know that he's about to pay something off for me he's about to he's about to pay off my sins he's about to pay off my debt. as a matter of fact Jesus already paid my debts come on Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe sin has left the crimson and he washes white as snow it's already done some of you are waiting for God to do it but father God has already done it in advance when you was just in the womb, he was already raising the funds for your college. Come on. When you was in the womb, come on, he was already painting the walls and setting up the crib. How do many of you know that our God is a proactive God? He doesn't wait to the last minute, but he's always on time. The Father God that we serve has already set things in order so you don't have to struggle, so you don't have to plead, so you don't have to beg, so you don't have to scratch and survive. How many of you know that we serve the type of God that has things already set up. I know it seems like a setback, but God told me to tell somebody in here, everything that's going in your life is a setup to show you that he's in charge and he's a good, good God. Oh, I wish I had some praises in here. I, would, I said I wish I had some praises. Lord Jesus. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, don't you talk about my father. I got a good father. He, he's got my back. And let anybody play with me. And let anybody mess with me. Don't you mess with me because when I call on my father, Lord Jesus, if, if I go to daddy about this, he's going to come out and he's going to scare every bully, every demon, every imp, every minion, every attack, every sickness. Come on, every emotional and, and mental turmoil. He's about to scare it away. How many of you know that our God is a vengeful God? He fights our battles. Come on. He's violent in his ways and, and he does not mind going to war and going to bat for his children. This is why I'm here to let somebody know in here that you need to stop fighting battles that you're fighting for the battle is not yours but it is the Lord. Oh God. That battle and that heavy load that you are bearing right now, you ought to just give it over to Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, give it over to Jesus. You can't bear it anyway. Your back is too weak. Your hips are too skinny. Come on. Your feet are too short. Your fingers are too short. They're too skinny. They're too nimble. But you've got to know that our God is a great God. And there is nothing that he cannot do. He can do anything but fail. He is strong and mighty. That's why the Bible says, 
lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong. Oh, God, where are my saints in here? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O God. O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I'm here to let you know that Father God is a good Father. And uh, he has done everything that you have needed for your life. All you have to do is receive his love. The scripture tells us that there is a man who has two sons and the young son takes the inheritance that father gives him and he spoils the goods and sends himself in a place by which he does wild things. I believe there are some sons and daughters in here that are guilty of doing wild things. I think all of us can admit to that. Amen. Yes. Maybe. No. All sanctified. Hallelujah. But all of us are guilty of doing wild things. Taking what the Father has given us. Some of us are taking our free will and using it however we please. Some of us are using grace and abusing it however we please. Some of us are abusing time, the time that Christ gives us. Some of us are literally young and we think that time is gonna run out so we gotta take every time that we have and do some wild things. Come on, the prodigal son. Am I talking right? The prodigal son, he ran off and left his father. And some of you have abandoned your relationship with Christ. You have abandoned your prayer closet. You've abandoned your walk with Christ. You have no interest in this anymore because you feel as though time is weighing against you. And you got to get some things done in life. But I'm here to let you know that Father God is calling back the prodigal son. That in spite of you wallowing in your pigsty, you need to know that there is a better place where you are so where you're going. He wants you to know that you don't have to stay in this pigsty. You don't have to stay around these pigs. As a matter of fact, you will never know what a father is if you stay around the pigs. Pigs don't know how to father. Pigs don't know how to mother. They're animals. And this young man, had he stayed in the pigsty, God, you got to help me in here. Had he stayed in the pigsty, he would have never knew what it was to be a son. Come on. He would have never knew what it was to be fathered. And I believe that that in this society, in this generation that we live in, brother, that this is a fatherless society where the pigs dwell. Come on. Where there is no honor, where there is no refuge, where there is no restitution, there's no connection, and there is no protection because we live in such an abandoned society where fathers are missing. Fathers aren't in the home, and if they're in the home, they're not in the home, if you know what I mean by that. If they're, if they're not in the home, then they're incarcerated. If they're not incarcerated, then they're working. If they're not working, then they're then they're then they're drugging and they're and they're clubbing and they're doing all sorts of things that are dishonorable to the home. There is no structure in the home. It seems as if moms have taken upon the roles of mothers and fathers and aunties and uncles and grandmothers and grandfathers. This is why moms wear several hats. But where are the men? Where are the fathers? This young man is in the pigsty, and I truly believe that when he was in the pigsty, he began to regret every decision that he some of us in here have regret lately some of the decisions that we have made because we have separated ourselves from our heavenly father. We have separated ourselves from our divine father and there we are wallowing with the pig saying to ourselves surely there is a better place that my father has for me than where I am right now. The scripture says he came to his senses and I'm here to let somebody know in this room that you're about to come to your senses. You are about to realize that where you are now is nowhere near where Father God has for you. And if you would just trust the decision that he has made for your life, my God, if you would just trust the inheritance that he has given you, that you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a lonely nation to show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness 
and into his mouth in this life. Where are the sons and daughters in here that realize that truly there is something greater that God has for me than where I am now? I may not be who I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Some of you, I am calling you out proverbially from your demonic uh, mud sty, from your pig sty. Come out from the pigs. Come out from among them and be ye separate. You are a child of God. Why do you have mud all on your face? Why do you have dirt all on your face? Get that stuff up off of you and come out from that place and see that God is calling you back to the palace from the pit to the palace from the pit to the to, from the pigsty to the I wish I had somebody in here that would open up their mouth and give God glory yeah, because he's calling you out turn to your neighbor and say he's he's calling me out he's calling me out he's got I know I got comfortable here yeah 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 I'm calling you out of your state of comfortability but as long as you stay in that mud trust me you won't be comfortable for long baby because if you dwell with those pigs you'll smell like the pigs and if you smell like the pigs you'll start acting like the pigs and if you start acting like the pigs you'll start oinking like a pig but he has not called me to the spirit of fear but of unto power and of love and of a sound mind. He came to his senses. My God in here. I feel this word in here. My God, my God. He came to his senses. He had to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for him. And his soul began to cry out, hallelujah. Something began to happen on the inside of him. And I want this word to touch many of you on the inside. Father God loves you so much. He is, he is desperately reckless after your position right now. He he is going to literally show you the type of love that will make you say to yourself, I don't want to go back. Lord Jesus, let this message touch some of you who have been wallowing in sin and wallowing in, in transgressions and iniquities. You've been wallowing. You've been playing pity pat with the wrong people. You've been dancing with the devil. You've been sleeping with the devil. You've been doing all sorts of things that you know Father God has not called you to. You have wasted your inheritance, but I'm here. My God, I feel your anointing in here. I'm here to let you know that your days in the pigsty are over. I wish I had some rejoice. I see tears falling from people's eyes, but you ought to let those tears just fall because something is breaking in the spirit. What those tears represent, Samantha, is Father God is purifying you. Oh God, he's cleansing. I wish I had, I need everybody to get this for yourself. He's cleansing you. He's washing you up to let you know that that dirt that you've been going through, it was necessary, but it's only temporary. I wish I had. Lord Jesus, he, he, God, help me in here. He, oh Lord Jesus, he, he, he said to himself, surely if I just go back to my dad's house, uh, I know I'm a son, my God. But some of y'all need to understand what Father God brings you through sometimes is he wants to develop not just sonship, but servitude. Uh, he was proud. He was arrogant. He was a prodigal son. He lived an extravagant life. I'm sure he walked the grounds of the palace and said, my daddy is the king and I don't got to do nothing. And some of us in here have been sitting on our calling. You've been sitting on your anointing. You've been sitting on what Christ has called you to just because he's a king. You think you get to sit around and eat grapes all day and have people fan you off. But I'm here to let you know that there is work to get done, sons and daughters. And when you come back to the palace, you will realize that not only are you a son, but you're also a servant. You get to serve. Oh, God. See, because as long as you remain in the concept and the mindset of a son you will remain proud and prudent but watch this the moment you become a servant you see the privilege of serving others come on you see the privilege of helping others and how many of you know that this greater that is inside of you is greater to help somebody else this greater is to serve someone else this greater I want to talk to the men in here because you have your biological children but what would you do if I told you that father God wants to use you as a servant to be a father figure to someone else what would you do if I told you that this man standing up here didn't have a father but he had some father figures and because of the father figures they was able to make this son the 
servant. Come on, somebody. He wants to humble you. He wants to mold you, and he wants to shape you. He, he goes back to the Father's house. My God, Lord, I love you in here. He goes back to the Father's house, and when he goes to the Father's house, Brother Lawrence, the Scripture declares that the dad is waiting at the door. He's waiting for his son. I need somebody to know in here and let this word resonate with you that Father God has been waiting for you for a long time. Uh, he's, he's, he's been waiting for you to come unto him, all ye who are laboring and heavy laden. He said, come unto me, children, because I want to give you rest. The greatest rest you will ever have will not be what you experience at night nor when you're sitting in your favorite chair in the house watching your favorite television program. The greatest rest you will experience in life is knowing that you're good with dad. I said that you're good with, oh God, come on church, talk back to me. The greatest rest that you can ever have in life is knowing of a surety that you are good with dad. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm good with dad. This is the greatest rest, to know that he's not angry with me. Uh, to know that he's not upset with me, my God. To know that he has not abandoned me or neglected me. Is this making sense to anyone in here? Can you imagine that type of rest? The Bible says we have peace with God for this reason. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind. What? Through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ gave you the ability to have rest because Jesus Christ gave you the ultimate connection with God. It was because Jesus Christ died that you are able to say that you're a son of God. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross and his blood was shed, you got to understand, brothers and sisters, you are no longer an orphan, but you have been given, as Paul says in Romans 8, the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. You are not able to make a cry that a child makes to dad if it had not been for his son Jesus dying on the cross for you. And because of that death, come on, somebody, you can be resurrected resurrected and being joined with the Father himself. I am here to let you know of a surety that he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you in spite of what you've done. He loves you in spite of who you are. He loves you in spite of your color. He loves you in spite of your race. He loves you in spite of your size. He loves you in spite of your weight size. He loves you in spite of your hair color. He loves you. I know it's purple. He loves you. I know it's gray. He loves you. I know it's nappy, but he loves you. My God, lift your hands in here. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands in here. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Come on, just receive the Father's love. Somebody needs to get this in their spirit. Somebody is going to receive a breakthrough today. Receive it right now. Receive this breakthrough. There's some people in here that have been far removed from their biological father. There's some people in here that was never loved by their biological father. There's some people in here that never knew their biological father. I'm here to let you know that Father God wants to father you. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father God wants to love you. He wants to love you back to himself. Come on. I know you've drifted afar off, and there are some even backsliders in here that have drifted afar off, and, and you don't know where Father God is any longer. He said, you know where I am. I've been here all along. I've never left you. You have left me, but I'm asking you to come back. And when you come back, he said, I'm running after you. He said, I'm chasing after you. He said, I love you with an unfailing, undying, irrevocable love. I love my sons. I love my daughters. Lift your hands. I love you. I love you. I love you. Son, daughter, I call you by name and I put my arms around you. Thank you, Jesus. I love the fact, thank you, Jesus, that he calls this story the prodigal son. Isn't it interesting that he called me prodigal before son? Think about that for just a moment. 
It could have been that he just called me prodigal. Jesus. But thanks be unto God, come on church, that he calls me son after prodigal. Thanks be unto God that he, he looked past who I used to be and wants to make me something better. Thanks be unto God that he didn't just say prodigal, but he said prodigal, now son. He looked at me and saw me in my mess. But still, watch this, he calls me son. He didn't allow me to dwell on who I was. He brought me to the focus of who I am to be. All the sons and daughters in here, can you give your Lord a praise in here? Can you give your Lord a praise?